Superwolf22. I'm here with Che Audio. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, che Audio is a new company, or um, you are um, in the like, education or more in the, in the field of research? A bit both. Uh, actually, we are like, uh, thinking a lot about physical modeling and how to bring it to the analog world and how to get closer to electronic sound production, basically. And we started thinking about interfaces, like musical interfaces, and how we can get them, um, yeah, how, how we can combine this with, with synthesizers to not only play maybe, or play knobs or keys, but also be able to really get a bit closer. And that's why we started to produce an interface that is capable of exciting resonators. So that's the link to physical modeling also. We use an exciter and a resonator, so you excite the resonator. Maybe I can directly show it. Uh, here's a... This is our interface. It has a piezo disc inside, so if you scratch it... If you sc scratch it, you are able to excite different resonances. frequency shifter built inside to excite different overtones inside the resonator. I hope this comes through, but you can really scratch the surface right now. The That's the, that's the interface and on, uh, right now <clears throat> this is our new product, it's a prototype I just finished a few days ago. It's an analog, um, analog prototype, it has two delay lines inside, two bucket brigades and basically I guess you know couple strong, if you know couple strong synthesis you, you might guess okay we can do string sounds with that. Um, but it's not only limited to string sounds, you can also create inharmonic timbres with this one. That's the speciality here. So we use a kind of a little trick to rotate the signal in between the delay lines and by this rotation we can generate inharmonic sounds. So maybe let me show you this. This is a harmonic one still and if I begin rotating this harmonics and we can continuously shape the timbre of the sound like this. How does can this idea because um, I know that there's many uh, these um, physical modeling or um, couple strong things in digital implemented is it far more difficult to implement this all this analog bits because we've do, it's interesting to see uh, also there are not many many uh, analog stereo delays there's more uh, there's more mono delays or digital stereo delays but analog is very very few on the market even in the pedal scene I think yeah I mean stereo for euro rack is probably a thing on its own because most mod uh, modules are mono of course um, and I guess people think out of compatibility reasons they do mono modules. Um, but the analog physical modeling is a challenge on its own because it's a bit different um, than the typical approach. And also you need kind of exact mathematical functions inside analog. And that's, you know, you have things like uh, transistors heating up and, and, and all these kind of little complexities that make it a bit So it's definitely a, a thing um, about the circuit. And it, was a, it was a bit a challenge and it's still not 100% finished, so... Um, and it, um, you want to pro uh, release then as a product, you, uh, as in, uh, you want to be then a UREC developer, as a traditional w uh, with modules in... Oh, yeah, I mean, we, I think in the long term we might end up really doing self-contained instruments and uh, for us right now we think of this as an intermediate step to say okay let's just put a resonator out there it makes sense on its own and maybe at some point we say okay we are ready now to build it inside a 
little bit bigger instrument maybe. I, I imagine an instrument that you maybe can play with two hands and use this exciter resonator technology with it, but who knows? Can you what will be? Uh, can you give me fl maybe some uh, examples of what kind of features are included? So there are two uh, BBD delays inside. Yes. Um, so here you have the left delay line and the right delay line. We call it X Y because we really think of it in, in coordinates this uh, in this way. So there's a delay line representing the X coordinate and a delay line representing the Y coordinate in a Cartesian system kind of. And then there is a mathematical function that can rotate these signals on the, on the, in this 2D plane, kind of. And uh, here you have the pitch on the left delay line, a coarse and defined pitch, on the right one the same. Then, of course, uh, modulation, uh, uh, linear modulation and uh, exponential modulation. So you can do FM on the delay lines. Uh, so frequency modulation on both. Then there is a, a low-pass filter, of course, also analog, and that you can modulate. Then there's the decay, that's the, you know the, feed, the amount of feedback that you can also modulate, and the rotation that you can modulate up here. So the rotation is the angle that you know defines the timbre of the instrument. There's also the possibility to send and return from the delay line so you can open the feedback loop and patch in another delay if you like or maybe an all pass filter or something that you know further expands the possibilities of this so both delay lines can be opened they can also be played independently if you if you stop the mixing so if you put the rotation to zero degrees they basically operate independently so you have to two delays. And the screen is there for handle the, this rotation feature? The, uh, sorry? The, the screen is uh, dedicated uh, yeah. to the full rotation. The firmware is not totally finished yet. It, it should show you, you know, the signals that are inside the module normally, how, how they, what, what's going on and how the rotation is going on. And it also looks pretty nice, I think, if you can see the, the rotation in there, but it's, it's not yet finished. Right now it just shows you the angle that you, you, you can choose with this knob here. And it, I think that's handy if you program the angle with, a, with an external CV to really see, okay, am I, in which corner am I? Am I producing harmonic sounds or not? And you know, you can see it, the CV jumping around there to, to, to get a grip of what you're what you're just doing. And uh, this um, your, uh, controller, it works with CV, yeah? It's, it's a CV controller, basically. Or can it, can it also transmit yes. MIDI? This, this can do both, actually. And on the back side, you have the CV outputs. And uh, this is an audio MIDI output, so you can actually connect it to a laptop. Can you please change this to USB-C? <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> we will. This is a very small series that's actually kind of a developer edition right okay. now still so basically i think after after doing that module we will so it's not a stand run of that so so it's not a standalone synth it's just a tactile controller yes yes it's a it's a it's a tactile controller that's a, i think that's the best way to coin it right okay and uh, you you are a, so a fresh company and you act so um, we can expect and first maybe post the finished products this year, you think? I hope so. I, I, I guess it takes half a year to finish that waveguide. And you are uh, from Germany, right? Yeah. Yes, we are from Weimar. That's like 200 kilometers from here. Not so far. And then uh, your uh, production is here and everything, so you're handmade almost. Yeah, I mean, we have to figure out how to produce this. It depends a bit. This this thing has a lot of parts, uh, and depending on how many we do, I, I'm not sure if we can do it still by hand. But and let's see. You have something also hidden in your little uh, yeah. bag here. <laughs> There's a little it, Easter egg. Bicycle. Right. right, let's show this. So we also do software, and this is a software physical model of a snare drum. So it's running on this laptop right here. Uh, this is a model that you can see.
So you can trigger that with via MIDI or you can excite it with your hands with a piezo disc. And this one is already available, yeah? This one is available through our website and it's actually free. There's a free version that you can try out directly with MIDI programming. And if you want the feature to excite this with your hands with a piezo, uh, then there's like a pro version that you can buy. Okay. And uh, you know a bit the direction in which price direction uh, your two first products or hardware products would go? Is it this is already available on our website. So this is 450 right now. It's not very cheap, but it's a very small batch that we are producing with, uh, with our hands right now. Um, I guess that's why. <laughs> and this is not, I don't know yet. Uh, there's. Uh, but it's probably not going to be very cheap because it's a very complex module with a lot of PCBs stacked and with a lot of parts inside. And maybe, I mean, you have to figure that out and maybe reduce the part count a little bit and then let's see okay. what the price will be. Then thank you for this uh, interesting um, product presentation and uh, to hear from your f f company. So the first steps are done. And I'm looking forward uh, for the final product. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you. And Bye. hope to see you again in the next videos. Bye.